Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right, today's show starts my six part series of Australian wines, four of which were donated to me by Jason Carley, one of my Instagram followers, literally a day or so after I took my advance exam. I'd post on social media about not passing the exam and that I would be resuming my studies shortly afterwards. So Jason, I didn't forget about the wines, which I've already told you that. So this wine and the next three will be his wines. It was very generous of you to donate these wines to me. I also have two more wines that I've acquired over the past few years from Australia that I'll be doing after that. As far as my studies were concerned last year, I really never started that up due to the pandemic, at least not in earnest. Recently, I've resumed them. Not hardcore yet, but I'm making some progress. Australia is on the horizon. I should be either on Australia by the time you see this episode or at least doing it by the second or third wine of the series. So it seemed appropriate that I review these wines, since that's what he purchased them for. Today's wine is one of the most respected Riesling producers in Australia, Pusey Vale. Founded in 1847 by Joseph Gilbert, it is now owned by the Hillsmith family. They own several Australian and New Zealand wineries. One of their best known is Yalumba, which they founded in 1849. Pusey Vale is located in the Eden Valley. This vineyard is the oldest vineyard in Eden Valley. It is also the only single vineyard Riesling in Eden Valley. For many years, it fell into disuse and got revived in the 1960s. Eden Valley is a higher altitude valley in South Australia. It borders the Barossa Valley, and the closest large city is Adelaide. Its average elevation is around 1,500 feet and it is about 800 feet above the Barossa Valley. This provides overall cooler temperatures and longer hang time. The vineyard is certified organic and they practice biodynamic farming. This also includes an insectarium. Now, I seen one of those ones over at Benziger, which was outstanding to check out. So what is that? It's a way to have pest control by encouraging other insects to inhabit a part of the vineyard. Their winemaker, Louisa Rose, is the head winemaker at Illumba. She has been in charge of Pusey Vale since 1996. The viticulturalist is Brooke Howell uh, and has been with the winery since 2010. Now, this seems like a good time to mention that I've resurrected my merchandise line. I retired my 1337 wine line, but now I have my WWTV and outstanding or hashtag outstanding live merchandise. The outstanding line is all about positivity and is based on my response of outstanding when asked how I'm doing and I literally do this. I have polos, t-shirts, and accessories on Zazzle. Those are really for the WWTV side. Check out this sweet logo polo. <laughs> the script says t-shirt because I was wearing the t-shirt. I'm wearing the logo. I also have a t-shirt which I'm probably showing you a picture of. The outstanding line is all t-shirts. So far I've only have a small number of variations of t-shirts for both lines with more to come. Link below in the description, so please check them out. All right, enough of that. Let's get into this wine's stats. All right, the 2018 Puseyvale 1961 Block Riesling. Retails for about $29. It's from Eden Valley. It's 100% Riesling, 12.5% ABV. Total acidity is 6.7 grams per liter. The pH is 2.86. This is super low for a wine. Residual sugar is 0.4 grams per liter, so this should be a bone dry Riesling with lots of acidity, which the back label confirms. I wish more wineries would adopt the scale on the back of their labels. Okay, let's check it out. I am super excited. So, again, Jason, thank you so much for uh, sending i probably put it a little too tight. There you go. Um, if you put these on really tight, they're a pain to take off. So anyway, so yes, Jason, thank you so much for sending these to me. That was extremely generous. So I do not drink enough Australian Riesling, and this is a testable wine. I would imagine that this particular winery would be on the short list of wines that I would get if I was going to be given a... Uh, 
an Australian Riesling in an exam. So this is a treat to get this. Can we smell it? So I'm super excited for that. I'm gonna take a little swig of water real quick. I was gonna put an overhead camera, but I'll try to do that for the uh, rest of the episodes here. And, and just so you know, um, I'm recording these in order of how the wine should be tasted. I'm doing seven episodes in one sitting. So while this is being put out in March, I'm actually, you're gonna see about two other episodes, three other episodes prior to that. Anyway, let's check it out. So I don't have any, actually I do have a white piece of paper I can use. Recognize this? Well, you should because this was, I think, the, issue, the, the episode right before it, even though I haven't recorded it yet. All right. So as far as uh, color, definitely a lighter straw-ish col straw color. There's, I would say, a little more kind of goldish green on the edges, but uh, nothing really crazy. It's really, it's really just a pretty straw, fairly straw throughout the whole out. All right. So, and the green could be just from reflections elsewhere. I mean, the bottle's green. I don't have anything else. Or the green screen behind me, even though I have my stuff. So yeah, let's check it out. So, I mean, if you drink enough Riesling, like if I got this in a blind, I would know immediately this was Riesling. There is absolutely no question this is Riesling. There's only one grape that could smell like this. And it has that, it has that plastic, we call petrol, smell. Um, my master sommelier mentor uh, will, if he smells plastic shower curtain, that's his code for petrol because he really has a hard time smelling actually the gasoline type thing. But this is straight up shower curtain. I mean, it is absolutely shower curtain. Which, um, trust me, these, these descriptors sound like they're bad, but this is good. But there's a petrol quality to it that can only come from Riesling because Riesling has such a high amount of a chemical, and that's not a bad word in this case, called TDN, and that is what gives us this petrol smell, and Riesling just has it in abundance. Not that any other wine doesn't have, or any other grape doesn't have it. And with that said, I'm also getting like um, the fruit cup, which is another indicator of Riesling. It tends to have all the categories of fruits. So I'm getting kind of like a little bit of a grape smell, a little bit of like a red cherry smell. It's kind of like they're in that, that little fruit cup juice, you know, like you get as a kid. So I get that, I get the apple, I get uh, kind of the green apple, the, like the green grape, the little red cherry, a little bit of orange. I don't know if I really get anything like mango, tangerine, stuff like that, but you know, I'm getting the citrus, I'm getting the tree fruit. I don't have any really stone fruit necessarily, but I get like a little bit of grape. So yeah, I mean, it's all there. I see, it was kind of funny. I got like a little whiff of like sugar, like, like powdered sugar, which there isn't any, there's no sugar in this wine, but that was kind of cool. And it's really clean. Um, there's a wine out there from Germany called Clean Slate. It really smells like clean slate. Like there's a slate quality to this wine it's like really wet rock but it's it's there's a certain quality like that to it yeah i mean river rock but the the petrol is is what's driving the bus on this if if we were talking about what are the three or four main things that are in this wine that identify it petrol is the big the big rock okay so let's taste it so on the palate you get the really crisp and tart fruit. Um, off the top of my head, if I was just drinking this and I wasn't really paying attention, I would I would think this is, might be a, a bone dry, and it is bone dry, a bone dry like Alsatian Riesling or maybe Austrian, but I'll, I'll get to why I would say it wasn't those just from that first initial taste. I mean, it would, uh, that would be where my mind would go first, just because I don't drink a lot of Australian Riesling. So my mind, when I taste dry, is not Germany, though they do make dry Riesling in Germany and they make some great dry Rieslings there. But for the purposes of at least the exam that I would take, they probably wouldn't throw in a dry Riesling for me, but if I was gonna do the Master Sommelier test, they might. 
because that's not as easy of a thing to do. But there's a little bit of grittiness to it. It's kind of like you crush the, crush the slate and then you mixed in the fruits. So you get really kind of like this green apple and lemon, sorry, lime, not really lemon, but this green apple lemon type of, of not quite, I don't want to say powder, but like it was got crushed up with the slate. And then you got a little bit of that get green grape, not as much as you got on the nose uh, and a touch of orange, but not a ton of it. The, uh, the red cherry is really just on the aroma, but you really get, you know, that lime, that green apple, uh, a touch of the orange, a little bit of that green grape, but it's really, 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 I got to dig for that. But the tartness is so tart and the acidity is definitely high. I would say it's screaming high. Alcohol is, I mean, you already, I mean, I'll scroll back because I don't remember the alcohol. Was it 12? 12 and a half, right? 12 and a half percent alcohol. So yeah, it's, you know, moderate alcohol. You get the petrol, you get this kind of wax animal type of thing. Now I'm also getting this little bit of herbaceousness out of it, which I normally would associate with Austria, not Australia necessarily. But there's like this, almost like this um, orange peel type of thing. So it's not necessarily herbaceous. There's like a non-fruit characteristic that's giving me this kind of orange pith, orange peel type of thing. There's a bitterness to it, to the wine, whereas there's not necessarily a bitterness to other Rieslings. So there's a little bit of that little bitterness to it. There's a little bit of a um, tire to it, a little bit of rubber, a little bit of Firestone, you know, Firestone shop type of thing going on or Goodyear shop, depending on which one you've gone to gas station, you know, uh, mechanic shop, that type of thing. So, I mean, these are the things like, so the palette, you've got the petrol, but you have such a preponderance of it that you're like, wow, it pretty much can only be one thing. Then you have this very high acid. Now, very high acid in white wines is really limited to only like three or four grapes. Now, why would I take this to the new world? I don't know. That's that's what would confuse me on, on an exam. But I would say that there's like this characteristic, Alsace tastes like sunshine. This doesn't taste like sunshine um, because Alsace has the most sunlight hours of any other place in France because they don't have any rain or they have very little rain. Austria is really very, uh, I'm going to say herbaceous, but there, there's, an, there's an herbal quality to Austrian wine, somewhat like an oregano tarragon type of thing. And I don't get any of that in here. Like I got that non-fruit characteristic. Why would I take it out of Germany? I think it's just because it's so bone dry. It's not that you won't get a bone dry, but with Germany, I also tend to get, uh, even with dry Rieslings, I tend to get more of the rest of the fruit. So, you know, the apple, I'm sorry, the nectarine or an apricot or a peach that I don't really get with this. This wine is fantastic, by the way. So... If you are someplace that sells some really kick-ass uh, Australian wine, because there does exist, and that's what this whole series of Australian wines is going to be, at least the first four will definitely be. The other two, we'll, we'll see, because I've had one of them in the past, and it was really good. The, the last one I'm going to do, or, or the of the last two, one I've had before, uh, like a few years ago, and it was, it was solid, and the other one I've never had, but it's really interesting. Yeah, this, this one is outstanding. Now, I could say it could use a little bit more of a chill because this is not quite room temperature. Uh, the house is pretty cold right now. Um, well, it's not cold, but it was definitely cool just because it's like 30 degrees outside. And I did throw these white wines in the fridge for like 10 minutes while I was finishing setting up just to kind of drop the temperature down. But yeah, it's kind of weird. There was like this creamsicle thing that was going on, but I know there's no malolactic to this. So it's a great wine. <clears throat> Again, if you find this wine, totally seek it out. Um, if you like dry Riesling, like I do, I like Riesling period. And I love aged Riesling like this wine. And, and I, I, I think it might say, it might say in the back label. Yeah. So on the back label, it says you can drink now from 
from now to 2033. So that's, you know, 13 years easy. I guarantee you 20 years from now, 25, 30 years from now, this wine will be different for sure, but it will be absolutely incredible. A couple of things that I uh, was on the back label that wasn't on their, um, their other thing, which I'll probably throw into the stats. The, um, Altitude is 440 to 490 meters. I said this is a high altitude valley. The average rainfall is 71 millimeters of somewhere 711 millimeters. I don't know what that is in inches, but I'll put a lower third with that. And um, it says skeletal and pitsolic for the soil profile, which I will probably put a little thing over here to tell you what those are. Anyway, outstanding wine. So, you know, that is today's show. So again, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and then tell all your friends about it. And until next time, we'll see you later.